prefer the pace of television to the pace of movies. It's really a totally different discipline. I prefer television where you, where you, it was more like a play. Oh, hi, Bob. Hey, Bob. Hi, Bob. Oh, hi, Bob. Oh, hi, Bob. Welcome home, Bob. <laughs> yeah. Are you expecting someone else? My manager said, would you want to do a weekly sitcom? And I said, I said, yeah, because it would give me time at home. I wouldn't be on the road as much. And, um, and we'd give our family kind of a normal, normal life. I was writing partners with Lorenzo Music. We had uh, a deal to write a pilot. We kind of thought about it, you know, okay, well, Bob listens funny. It just kind of came to us of going through all the different occupations. So they said, what would you, what would you think about playing a psychiatrist? I said, well, I, would, I think I'd like to play a psychologist because it deals with less severely disturbed people. I didn't think we should be making fun of bipolar and schizophrenics and people like that <laughs> much as my natural inclination is to do that <laughs> i got a call from a cbs executive and they said we read your presentation it's great it sounds like bob but does he have to be a psychologist and it was like uh well <laughs> yes <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it sounds benign these days, but I, I think that, you know, uh, the network was a little gun-shy about dealing with crazy people. I only had one problem this week. <laughs> well, why don't you, uh, why don't you tell me about it? Yesterday morning, I was possessed by the devil. <laughs> In the late 50s and early 60s, it was unusual for a stand-up com comedian to have a show. All of the family was completely staffed by stage actors, as was MASH, as was Mary Tyler Moore. Bob was the only guy who went from being a sound to a face uh, to being a, a full-blooded character. You, uh, you may not think you're saying anything by, by not saying anything, but actually you are. You see, I'm a, a trained observer of people, and I've learned a great deal about you. Th there is one, uh, one piece of information that I need to complete the picture. Um, would you mind if I ask... What the hell do you want? The secret is that they found Bob Newhart, who's an edgy guy under it all, and put him in a softer format. And that's when the pieces really came together. The, the biggest thing a stand-up brings to a, a role is, is the integrity of the character. Because you, you know what, is, what has worked for you over the years. Bob had that real gift of being a real actor, whether he knew it or not. So I think he was completely prepared uh, for going into a uh, situation comedy. Uh, Mrs. Harold, uh, we've been over this before, and as you said yourself, the, uh, you overeat because uh, having a beautiful body, uh, you feel, threatens you. <laughs> and, and for some reason, having a fat body doesn't threaten you. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm happy to hear you, but you've been able to control it. Mrs. Harold? Yeah, I, I can't understand you with your mouth full. And so you can bring in all the Nazis of the world. And, and it's perfectly normal to let these crazies in. Dr. Hartley, I, I'm sure he has girlfriends, but he denies it. Well, of course, Todd's 13 now. <laughs> Very many comedians are overpowering. Bob is underpowering. He's a minimalist. He would make a line funny by not spinning it. Hey, little mama, I'm coming home to you. He always did less. He did less than you thought humanly possible. And, uh, and consequently, the lines were ten times as funny. Bob would listen with such sincerity to really crazy things and try to make them seem not crazy. And you saw that struggle going on all the time. Writing Bob reacts, that was too much for him. That was like, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean reacts? <laughs> he, he, just, he just reacted. What seems to be the problem? Well, doctor, uh, Frank here wants to break up the act and go out on his own. <laughs> 
he listens to other people and doesn't just wait for his turn to be funny. He's a great audience, and that does set him apart. Why don't you give us a minute though yourself? Grab yourself a cup of coffee, will you? <laughs> you, uh, you, want, you want me to, to go outside? Do I stutter, Doc? You don't fool around with his uh, delivery. Don't ever stick your finger in there because he knows what he's doing. Someone said the show is running long and could you run your speeches together a little more? Um, not pause so much. And um, I explained to the that, that the stammer had gotten me at that point, a home in Beverly Hills, and I wasn't about to change it, so maybe they better take out some words. Look, I don't know.